So how do we breathe underwater? How do we breathe in so much happiness, so much of being itself that surrounds us everywhere? I do think you could say that addiction in many ways emerges because of a lack of contact with true being. Now that might sound very abstract to some of you. Once you make contact with being itself, uh, you know that you belong. Both Thomas Aquinas and John Duns Scotus, they both said the same thing. Deus est ens. God is being. And Duns Scotus says you can use the same word it was called the university of being. You can use uh, the same word being to apply to God, to apply to all creation, and to yourself. It's the same university, the same one voice, because they're all pointing to the same being. Now, we've all left the garden. That's why I called my book Adam Returns. Everything is about getting Adam back into the garden. We move into the thinking mind what we call the conscious mind that is actually not very conscious at all. Uh, and that thinking mind tells us all kinds of lies, separates us. It starts around the age of seven. Up to that time, I think that's we're all fascinated by little three and four and five-year-olds. They're still, in many ways, in the garden. <laughs> Do you understand? They haven't split yet. Somewhere around seven, we start splitting. Now, that's why we started giving you communion at seven. You understand? That's when you need the medicine, right? You don't need the medicine up to seven because you already know you're one. But then you leave the garden, and we, we got to start feeding you the body of Christ so you'll know you are the body of Christ. And so the transformation can take place, and you can know that you are what you eat. That's why if we didn't have Eucharist, we would have to create it. It's the most perfect religious symbol I can think of, what we're about to celebrate this morning. But nevertheless, we leave the garden. We move into split consciousness. We do the dance of life, and in that place outside the garden, we are very lonely. We feel what the philosophers call alienation. And that sense of alienation seeks some redress, some solution, some overcoming of that terrible sense of separation anxiety. We begin to see it in little children already. Around five, it begins. This fear of being separate from mama as the separation starts. The little ones don't even fear that yet. They know they're still in union. And all of the work of God is getting us back, back into the garden to believe what was always true and always will be true and is true this very moment. But most of us in our thinking mind, because of our intense self-hatred and self-doubt, we don't believe it anymore. Therefore, we have to find a new way of breathing, a new way of taking in life, in everything belongs, I call it, the contemplative mind, over against the calculating mind that most of us have been trained to think with. The way of breathing underwater is quite simply some form of simple contemplative mind. You don't have to make it highly religious. It's as simple as the breath, but it does not happen through the mind, right? You cannot get there you can only be there. 